Greetings to all of you who are here and those fellow worshippers in other parts of the world joining us through this live stream. With the celebration of the baptism of the Lord, we end the uh, so-called uh, Advent Christmas cycle of our celebration in the church. So <clears throat> it signals already it's a kind of a hint, this celebration between the, the season of Christmas, Epiphany, Advent cycle, with that of the ordinary time, which is a uh, celebration of the different moments, aspects of the, the mystery of Christ throughout the whole year, what we call the ordinary time. In this uh, feast of the uh, baptism of the Lord, so many themes that can be developed. But I would like to <coughs> focus today on the <coughs> image of God that we can get from these celebration, especially from the, the readings, the gospel today. There are quite a few Christians who don't really know which God they believe in. Sometimes the idea that we have of God is not healthy, solid, and unified. Rather, it is composed of uh, diverse and heterogeneous elements of our faith, our view of God along with the genuine aspects of coming from Jesus, what Jesus revealed about uh, who God is, there are also other elements, other regressive ones that belong to different uh, states of religious evolution of humanity. Along with the sublime underlies of God's love, there are also primitive fears of falling into his hands, for example. An attempt is made in many ways to reconcile love and the anger of God, for example. The unfathomable goodness of God and his rigorous justice, fear and trust, the impartial tribunal on the one hand, and also the kind, the God of grace. It's not really easy. In the hearts of many, a confusing image of God remains in force, which causes harm and prevents living the relationship with God with joy and confidence. In human consciousness, the image of a patriarchal God emerges quite spontaneously, contaminated by the projection of our desires and fears, our longings and disappointments. An omnipotent God, permanently concerned about His honor, always ready to punish, who only seeks recognition and submission from his subject, from us men and women. This image of God can take us further and farther away from his friendly presence. In general, religions introduce a lot of worship, many rituals and practices between God and the poor humans but their loving closeness risks being diluted. Jesus presents for many of those who see the first truly healthy image of God in universal history. His idea of a father God and his way of relating to him are free 
of false fears and projections. The fundamental change Jesus introduced in this vision of God is this. The religious attitude towards a patriarchal God is based on the conviction that humans exist for God. Jesus' attitude, on the other hand, shows towards his father, his view of the father is based on the certainty that God exists for us. The Gospel of Mark narrates the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan, suggesting the new experience of God that Jesus will live and communicate throughout his life. According to the story, the heavens opened, but not really to reveal the wrath of God or the anger of God that arrives with his threatening acts as the Baptist thought, for example, before but so that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, may descend, that is, His life-giving love. From open heaven, only one voice comes out, You are my beloved Son. It is a shame that despite calling ourselves followers of Jesus, we easily return to this regressive image of the Old Testament, abandoning its most genuine experience of God as shown by Jesus. We who follow, who are made children, we are made sons in the Son, as the rhyme writ you know, uh, of the theology would say, that we have become sons, to use the, in, in the son, or we have become children of God because of the child of God, Jesus. That is the beautiful message of the baptism, baptism of Jesus and our baptism, that we have been made beloved like Jesus. We thank God for this status He has given us through Jesus Christ, making us His children, beloved children. And may we continue to grow in this, in our consciousness of our being chosen, made children of God. And may we live according to our vocation of our dignity as children of God. Just as the children of the, for example, of persons in, the, in society, we expect them that these, the children of these, should live also according to the norms, to the uh, example for ex of their parents. This is also expected from those who profess or who have received the dignity of being children of God, that we live according to our vocation, our calling, as children of God. We are children of God and not of the devil. So may we act and live according, accordingly as children of God. Amen.